this I have to say is a long overdue award for Shirley, who is one of the great figures of South Australian journalism. I sort of grew up with Shirley. She uh, came to advertise when I was a young reporter, and the reporter's room was never the same after that. Um, she broke barriers, she broke a few hearts. <laughs> Um, her wit, her strength of character, her writing skills were sublime. And let me tell you, Premier, you may well feel agreed by some of the journalists around the room today for some of said about you. I can assure you, you've been that off lightly compared with many of the people that Shirley had to go at, <laughs> including your editors at the time. Uh, Shirley is a monument to South Australian journalism. She, uh, <laughs> she was a, uh, as I say, she broke barriers. She was a sublime writer, but, and she was admired by, as I think is a testament to, uh, to her award today, she was admired by many of the, uh, of the, the award receivers, like Max Fatchum, T.S. Cahoon, and, uh, and um, Stuart Coburn, who thought the world of her, than she of them. It's a bit like a time warp, actually, just remembering these names and faces and the people that we've been looking at tonight. And of course, Don Riddell, who was editor, the person who made uh, Shirley Arts editor, and I'd have to say, through his editorship and Shirley's writing skills, with a bit of help from Don Dunstan, made South Australia the maker of the arts in South Australia for the nation for many years. So Don might like to say a few words too. The late 1970s really were extraordinary. Don Dunstan were good, suddenly made the old Adelaide exciting. There was also a Don Dunstan, I'm not so good, but we might go to that here. Suddenly we were swinging. The arts were bursting out all over. We were the arts capital of Australia. All sorts of things were going on. Plays, poetry, performances, painting. A lot of it was tremendous. Sadly, a lot of it was terrible. Someone had to sort it out. So over the screens of a chief of staff, I think it was Don, I'd say, who was losing his star, and the ace reporter, Shirley stopped this boy. She seized the whole rabble. Her hot words encouraged the good, and by heavens, her furiously cold words sent the pretenders packing. Festival chief says that Australian Symphony Orchestra plays out of tune. Pandemonium. Museums demand heads to roll. Shirley writes on. The orchestra gets back on tune. Reg Livermore's huge pr production of Ned Kelly, Oberts and Adelaide. The interstate critics moan with delight. Shirley says it's not ready, it should go off. The show folds. Tears, tantrums. I had theatre managers and board members shouting, call her off, stop her. I was too frightened to do that. <laughs> so for that special time, the two arts flourished. We really were the Athens of the South. The fabled desk of Hearn once told me that Shirley was the best journalist he ever worked with. Now, as he mixed with the big boys in London and New York, he was chairman of AAP and editor-in-chief of the Advertiser, that thumb rap. It included what is now six members of the Hall of Fame, including Tom Scarlett here and me. So, Shirley, welcome to the club. <laughs> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, former colleagues, thank you, Dana, Don, and John, for those kind words and the exquisite embroidery. Thank you to the sponsors 
the union, the organisers, and all those who brought this about. It's a great honour, especially when I think of those who've gone before me through this hallway. It's also a great honour, so early in my career, <laughs> as a third age journalist. It's been a long time since I started in Sydney on the Anglican newspaper of Francis James a larger-than-life eccentric journalist, aviation war hero, bomber command, and terribly wounded escaper from German prisoner war camps. It should surprise no one that Bob Ellis and I came from the same unconventional literary stable. And everything we write, especially now as we get older, seems somehow influenced by that man. Then there was a kind of times when it was owned by the Shakespeare family, when my colleague was Eric Walsh. Then to Adelaide, and the great chief of staff, Doug Jervis, and the many characters who made the next 25 years or so memorable. The highlights, though, were the late 70s and early, early 80s, when Des Cahoon of Beloved Memory, Don Riddell and John Scales worked so hard to make the advertiser a newspaper of big ideas. It was exciting to come to work each day as an arts editor, literary editor, writer of opinion pieces and Saturday Serb columnist, when these guys were putting the arts and indigenous issues in the paper and allowing us to write about some hairy social justice issues for the first time, sometimes for the first time in his nation. I have love and respect for these men who so deeply believed in freedom of the press, freedom of expression, but also fairness and civilised debate, and they imbued the paper with these values. I will journey on with my third age column in the Adelaide and Melbourne Reviews, thanks to the wonderful Luke Stegerman, and before him, our dear friend Lachlan Cahoon. Congratulations to all of us tonight. Support your colleagues, especially when they are de defending the great principles of fairness, which we cannot depend on the wild child of the internet to deliver. And if I could just take a few more seconds, I'd like to mention a few names for the pleasure of saying them again. Some of them are still with us, thankfully. Bill Rust, who fought hard for me even when he was ill. Plum, Harry Plumbridge. Cock. What a character. Norm Flay, head printer. Max Faction. Pat Oliphant. Peter von Zanamicki. Jonathan Stone. Mike Atchison. Judy Wagner. Stuart Coburn. And Mary Armitage. Unforgettable. There was a, there was a lot more. A lot more of those wonderful people. And there was a lot of fun and a lot of laughter. That seems associated with scrambled eggs and Barossa Pearl at midnight after the 2 to 11 shift and with singing The Lord is My Shepherd in Parks. John Scarves has a seriously good voice. <laughs> Thank you. Again, uh, what a wonderful tribute to a wonderful, wonderful lady and a wonderful journalist. And uh, congratulations, Shirley. Uh, we're all very, very proud of you. Thank you to Jane Kittle from Bank SA and to Dana and to John and to Don. 
or Uncle Don, as I sometimes call him around the dinner table. So thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley, Scott, and